salvation among all nations. Yes. Let people praise you, O oh God. Yes. Let all people praise you. Yes. Oh, let all nations be glad and sing for joy. Yes. For you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Yes. Let the peoples praise God. O oh God, let all the people praise you. Amen. Amen. We now have our congregational hymn, which is found on the back of your program. It is Hosanna.
on your program. It is from the 118th Psalm, verses 1 through 2, and verses 19 through 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have became my salvation. The song that the wilderness rejected has been from the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us. We beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you. Give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord, the Lord is God, and he has given us sight. Bind the festive, festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. All? Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love is the ruler forever. Amen, amen. We will now have a musical selection and may have your seats.
York. Yeah. So, you know, I was satisfied with it. You know, I wasn't satisfied with it. <laughs> but uh, that's where I know him. That's why I know him from this church. All right. Hey, all right. Amen. 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 Brother Davis and Sister Davis for being with us this morning. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Um, unfortunately, yes, the Lord called uh, Brother back. Fortunate part. Uh, you told me you sung with him at the Civic Center and in New York and somewhere else. And, and uh, But guess what? Yeah, you go include me here. So, amen. Yeah. Don't let the Lord call and be home and stop you from seeing you. Amen. Amen. And if we still ain't going to pay you, amen. 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 If I know me, do I stand up in him, proclaim all truths. Amen. 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 But you can sing for the love. Amen. amen. Come on in. And he will pay you. All right. Amen. 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 In a mighty, mighty, mighty way, yes. shower you from blessings from all the man. Yes. Amen. Yes. Let us stand, let us greet the Davises and one another in Christian love. Amen. Amen.
being with us uh, this morning. Amen. And thank each and every one of you. Those again who are in person and those who may be online. We say to God be the glory for the great things he can and will yes. do. Uh, we are still in the midst of almost uh, just two Ooh. weeks away from Resurrection Sunday. Exactly two yes, weeks away. Yes. Still in our Lenten season as we are yes. honoring the Lord with uh, various types of fast and prayer. Amen. Yes. Amen. So to God be the glory. Uh, yesterday we had uh, the giveaway uh, here, clothing giveaway. I want to thank Sister Leader yeah. and that organization. Let's give them a hand in the yeah. yeah. uh, Kind of exhibited arms giving. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Uh, yeah. Elder Kelly yeah. uh, uh, taught on that just this past week. Yeah. And today, if you have time, and I've actually really made time this week. Still honor the Lord as Women's History Month. We're going to have our paint and thrive afterwards. Amen. We got little snacks for you, but we're going to paint and thrive. I said paint and sip uh, last yes. Sunday, and everybody focused on sipping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to paint and thrive. Amen. Sip on some water. Amen. Some iced tea. Amen. Amen. And I'm hoping that you do more painting and kind of thriving introspectively, amen. So we're going to do that afterwards. And then, and then go out and enjoy the sunshine. But let's enjoy the Lord and one another. It is giving me time now. It's giving me time now. And let me first of all say, uh, before we give, I really want to take time out to just thank each and every one of you for your weekly sacrifices financially. Amen. As I know it is a sacrifice, although the Lord tells us to sacrifice, amen, and to give obediently. I do personally as the pastor want to thank you for doing what you can. Amen. 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 If you can do better, you know that's between you and the Lord, and you should do better. But first and foremost, I want to thank you again for uh, giving uh, so generously. Amen. Yes, so to God be the glory. I'm going to ask that you stand to your feet. If you will, stand to your feet as our ushers come forward. Uh, we just come around freely. Amen. Uh, do get an envelope if you have it. Always, always record right what you give it. Amen.
Chronicles chapter 20 verses 5 through 12. Amen. That is 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verses 5 through 12. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it thusly reads, Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O oh Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all kingdoms of all nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God, who drove out the inhabitants, inhabitants of the land before your people Israel? and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever. And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in it your presence, for your name is in this temple and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and say. And now, here, here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned around from them and did not destroy them. Here they are, Rewarding, rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. Oh, our God, you are not judging them. Coming against us, nor do we know what to do but our eyes are upon you. Amen. Amen. This completes the reading of the word from 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 5 through 12. You may have your seats and we will have another selection and after that we will have our own Dr. Robert Duvall. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Vanessa, and all of you. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. To God be the glory for the great things that he can and will do. Yes. Amen. Let's see if we can go right to work. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Kelly has read 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 20 verses 5 through 12 in your hearing. Yeah. Amen. I want us to try to focus on, um, I'm going to lift verse 12. Try my best to get through almost this whole chapter in the sermon, but uh, we'll see. Man, we'll see. But verse 12 says, Thus said, O on them, for we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Amen. We ask God to continue in the blessing of his holy word. I'm going to speak for a little while, amen, just for a little while about uh, power principles for your problems, amen. I'm not hopeful I can give you some, through the word of God, some power principles for your problems. Let us pray. Precious God, our Father, we give glory and thanks to you. Father God, we thank you for this day. And now we ask that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, about this time last year, I went to a conference and ran into uh, one of my colleagues and, and friends. And he was a colleague on, on two fronts, both in ministry as well as in education. Uh, and he had uh, said to me, he had come across a difficult time because his education that he was working in was in another state and unfortunately uh, things are different in other states and so as we spoke uh, he was telling me about the difficulty and the uncertain time that he was in in his life as well as with his family and during that time as we spoke almost daily uh, he, he, he began to confide in me that uh, uh, he was having some financial difficulties. Uh, and he talked to me about leaning on the Lord as time passed. And I began to lean on the Lord. And I was led to a passage of scripture that we just read as a roadmap of instructions. Not only to help him, but it ended up helping me as well. My friend and colleague, I'm going to call him John, he was facing a challenge in, in those weeks of March of 2023. Uh, his, his, his company, his employer had been looking at ways to reduce the company's costs in anticipation of state budget cuts. He said to me, my boss was to meet with me. He probably had some information to share with me, I thought. And he did. He said, the boss said, I'm looking at realigning several job functions, he said, and they include eliminating your position. He said to me, God, my poker face masked a mind that was exploding with questions. He says, but there was only one question that really mattered. How will I tell my wife when we have dinner this evening? He said they ordered food and, and they talked a little bit. And after the food was uh, arrived and served, he said, he said he broke the news to her and reminded her and himself that God had always taken care of them. Okay. That he had never, God that is, abandoned them and that he had always provided for them. He said he even quoted Psalms 37, 25, one of the favorite Verses of his. He says, I've been young, and he says, and now I'm old. Yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken nor see begging bread. However, he said, he had to admit that at the time, the truth of this verse provided little comfort. Well, Y'all got to say amen on that. And although he had confessed the word, his thoughts and actions lag behind the words that he had spoken. He confessed to me that it took nearly five months 
for his thoughts and actions to completely line up with his confession of faith. Feeling separated from God, he beat himself up a lot during those first couple of months. He said, Satan, he said, was whispering in his ears. If you hadn't done this, if you had only done that, ah, you would still have your job. You left a safe job, and now you don't have any job. John said Satan came after him like sharks who smell blood in the water. My he said over and over again, he tried to get me to agree with him. He's talking about Satan now, that I wasn't even on God's radar anymore. <laughs> Have you ever been there where you felt like you weren't even on God's radar anymore? And he said, Doc, he said, you know what? Satan almost succeeded. Satan had so penetrated my mind with lies that I was feeling far away from God. He had begun to see himself as a Gentile to scrap in Ephesians 2 and 12. That at the time, uh, ye are without Christ. You are aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise. Having no hope and without God in the world. He said he felt like he was in the world. Like, and really was without God like Ephesians 2 and 12 says. Until then, Brother John's right. Huh? Uh, I must tell you, until then. Brother John's life had been one of minor disruptions. Well, y'all know what minor disruptions are. Minor disruption is, uh, you know, the visa bill come in is really too high. You just put it to the side. It's minor disruption. Minor disruptions is you need uh, 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 some money for gas. If you don't have any money, you got to wait a few days. You might have to borrow some. Minor disruptions. Minor disruptions is, guess what? You got a cold and all you got to do, right? Go to the drugstore. Get some Benadryl. Get some Thoroughflow. You drink it. Sleep. Eat some orange juice. Drink some orange juice. A couple of days. And you minor disruptions. He has learned there's no fighting Satan and his demonic horde, though, without divine intervention. Divine intervention uh, uh, showed me how King Jehoshaphat responds to a planned enemy attack, saved him and his nation. I'm talking about divine intervention. If you just go back with me to the second uh, Chronicles chapter 20, King Jehoshaphat had just returned home after nearly losing his life. In chapter 19, if you back up in verse 4, it says, he went throughout all of Judah uh, and yes, brought the people back to the Lord God of their father. He removes all of the pagan idols and Person, uh, and personally visits the people. He also appoints judges to administer the law of the Lord and settle disputes. Jehoshaphat followed in the footsteps of his father who did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, the Bible says. And the Lord established the kingdom in his hand. Well, one of the things that we see in Jehoshaphat's life was a relationship with the Lord that was built on humility. That's where our power begins, having a relationship with God that flows from a humble heart. When we find ourselves going through tough times, feeling defeated and wanting to give up, first, the first power principle for our victory is to humble ourselves to Jesus and focus on what he can do for us and not what the situation is doing to us. Trust me, this will not be easy, but when we put our path or our faith and trust in Jesus, I should say, he will take hold of our hand and walk us through the situation. Yeah. Jehoshaphat, he feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all of Judah. And I, and I grabbed this text because we're in our day of fasting. And so since we are fasting, it's good to have some inspiration about a person who was fasting and praying. And he set himself, the Bible says, to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And that second power principle for victory that we see in this passage is don't allow fear to paralyze you. 
All right, the word seek in this verse is significance. It shows the relationship that Jehoshaphat had with the Lord. The word is first used in Deuteronomy 4 and 29. Huh? It says, uh, 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 thou shalt find him if thou seek him with all of thy heart and with all of thy soul. The word means to inquire and to consult with God. Yeah. Yeah. See, when you're consulting with somebody, you got to humble yourself. Yeah. Uh, what should I do? How should I do it? What direction should I go? Should I be up or should I be down? Am I even right to even be thinking about this? When you consult, when you inquire, with you ever, you ever been lost? Yes. You got to humble yourself to pull over. Yeah. Uh, put the window down. Can you tell me how to get to here and there? You've got to humble yourself if, you, if you're going to inquire. Right. Paralyze us. Brother John began to telephone me regularly and to meet up with some of the brethren and myself. And he explained what had happened. God inspired the brethren with words that he needed to hear. And all of us, along with his wife, and I should say his wife, together help him rein in his emotions and, and redirect his thoughts to what God had said in his word. And that leads us to another power principle for victory that I want you to see and accept. Huh? And that is we have to ask mature believers huh? to seek the Lord with us. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Not for us, but with us. Yes. And see, I love this congregation because you are a for us people. Yes. You always yes. try to do for somebody. Yes. For your child. Yes. For your Because you I'm going to say this because I can't help but to say it as a man of God uh, when I'm standing in this pulpit but to preach nothing but the gospel. Right. And so often we pray for one another. Okay. We even pray for our fellow brothers and sisters huh, in our congregation but guess what? They ain't never on the line. Uh -huh. So you praying for them. Uh -huh. huh? When they going to all pray with you and with one another. Yeah. That's how power comes. That's how prayer is answered. Huh? Yeah. Yes, you can pray for them. You can ask for your child and for your grandchild. But until they decide to join you in the power of yes. prayer. Yes. Yes. Something will always be lacking. Yes. You're going to be praying for them never ending. Wondering when the blessing going to come. Well, it's, it's dragging because you praying for them and they're going about their business. You're going to tell me their situation ain't important enough for them to pray with you about the situation? All right, now. All right. All right, now. My Lord. In verses 6 through 9, Jehoshaphat acknowledges the Lord as the true and living God, and as the covenant God that had given them the land. He tells the Lord that whenever they face calamity, the people will stand in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. This reminds me of what the Lord says in Isaiah 43. He says, put me in remembrance let us plead together, set forth your case that you may be proved right. Again, the Lord talks about together. He says, put me in remembrance. He says, let us plead together. If I'm going to go to the Lord for you, I need you to go down with me. Let us go to the Lord together. Why am I on my knees? And you at shock. Yeah. We need to go together. Now let's put him in remembrance. Jehoshaphat reminds the Lord of his covenant relationship with Israel and proclaim victory. And I smile when I read this because before you can remind someone of his or her promise, ah, 
God. You must first know the promise yourself. Well, on it here. Here in 2 Chronicles 20, we see another power principle for victory. When it seems like we're being hit with everything but the kitchen sink, we must remind ourselves of God's promises to us in his word. I don't know about you, but the word is filled with promises. So you promised to never to leave me or forsake me. You promised to heal my body. You, yeah. you promised me that, that everything will work out for the good. Yeah. Lord, I'm holding you to that. Please yeah. show me the good. Yeah. We have the same rights and privileges I'm here to tell you. Jesus is our high priest. The Bible tells us how to respond when we face the unexpected. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So many of us can't face God. We feel we can't approach God. Our feelings of inadequacy and on me. But then like the prodigal son, I came to myself and I arose and came to the Father. Yeah. I'm here to tell you God is the only one who can help us, who can rescue us, and who can restore us. Yes, down there as you flow down in our text verse in the 12th verse of this 12th chapter, Jehoshaphat says, Oh, how God, will that not judge me? For we have no might against the great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes is upon you. He had to admit, huh? He admitted that Judah couldn't win the fight. Four, five months, Lord, please. I, I, many of us are there right now. Yeah. Uh, we get these uh, medical reports. Don't know what to do. Yes. God knows don't present us with two or more options. Really don't know what to do. Get phone calls on our children, huh? Maybe from the courthouse or the jailhouse. Don't know what to do. Huh? Grandchildren, huh? Get a call from the school. You can hear. They want to know why you ain't saying that because truth be told, you don't know what to say. I ain't never, I ain't never showed him nothing like that. I, what you want me to say? Yes, yes, but I'm here to tell you, be not dismayed, huh? For the battle is not yours. Right. Uh, as I try to bring this thing to a close, there's no need to fight in this battle. Ah, you need to set yourself. Now listen, we didn't read this, but I want you to go down to verse 16 and 17, because this ain't me speaking. This is the Lord that God as he spoke to Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat said in so many words, and let me make it in plain language. He said, listen, I can't figure this thing out. I don't know nothing, what to do, but I'm looking to you for the answer. Uh, let me put it plain. Uh, they coming after me now. They didn't told me they're going to cut the bunch. They didn't told me somebody going to get cut. I don't know what to do, but I'm looking to you. Hey, now listen. Uh, 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 the specialist that came back, huh? He didn't came back with the x-rays. He didn't came back with the biopsy. He didn't told me what's going on. 
can't take it out. But I'm looking to you yes. and what yes. to do. Yes. Ah, yes. guess what? Guess what? Verse 16 and 17, God tells the host of fact what he and the people need to do. Look at the first part of verse 17. He says, you, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Yeah. Right. He says, set yourself, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. In other words, go and sit down somewhere. Yes. <laughs> now that you didn't put it on me, yeah. let it be with me and on me. Now you just go on and sit down somewhere. Yeah. I'm here to tell somebody as I bring this thing to a close. You've got to trust Christ. You've got to trust the Lord to fight your battles. Some will be tangible. Others and most will be intangible. Some you'll be able to see and touch. In other words, some will be satanic against the evils of the world. How many of you know today, but the prayer uh, in the midst of our Lent season, there's prayer and there's power in prayer. And you've got to use this powerful tool of prayer. For the Bible tells me as I rehearsed in my mind as I thought about it this morning. Couldn't focus on the guys this morning. Just had to let the Lord bring some evidence back to me that you can refer to. And the Lord took me to the book of Genesis, the 20th chapter, that Abimelech had unwillingly taken Abraham's wife Sarah to be his own wife. But God came to Abimelech in a dream. And not only did he sentence Abimelech to die, but God also shut up the wounds in the house. In other words, none of the women that Abimelech was sleeping with could give any babies because God had closed the wounds. But guess what? When Abraham prayed for his enemy, uh, you got to get this, when he prayed for the man that took his wife, he prayed for Abimelech. Huh? Before the Lord in the Bible tells me that Abimelech was healed and the wounds were open. I'm here to tell you the power of prayer. Even your enemies can benefit from your prayer. But then the Lord kept working on me. And so he took me to the book of Numbers around the 11th chapter. And the children of Israel began complaining against the Lord. Oh Lord, and every now and then, children, you need to know that you can only push God so far. Amen. For the Bible tells me that all of their complaining kindles God's anger. And we know that there must have been a whole lot of complaining going on. Because the Bible also tells me that God is slow to anger. Uh -huh. yeah. So if you can kindle his anger, uh -huh. oh, you must have plucked his nerve. Uh -huh. So I'm here to tell you, be careful with all your complaining. And I tell you, I've been up and I've been down, but I try never to complain. Yeah. I say, Lord, I got my eyes fixed on you. Yeah. When God got angry at the children of Israel, the Bible tells me that he rained down fire and started, started burning them up. Oh, Lord. But Moses got on the prayer line. I'm talking about the one that you can call in right from your bed and you don't never call in. Right. Moses got on the prayer line. Come on, come on. The one, the one that's right there on your phone that you, that you, that you looking at when you're texting somebody. Moses got on the prayer line and he prayed on behalf of these scandalous folks. Oh Lord, and when he finished praying, the Bible tells me that God quits the fire. And I'm here to tell you, God is all right. But then as I kept meditating, I was trying to come upstairs. When Hannah could not bear any child, the Bible tells me that she prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord heard her cry and gave her a son by the name of Samuel. Oh, I'm here to tell you about the power of prayer. But then he trying to get upstairs. He said, uh, uh, don't forget to tell him about Hezekiah. Hezekiah heard his death sentence from prophet Isaiah over in 2 Kings around the 20th chapter. The Bible tells me that Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. 
and prayed to the Lord and the Lord Almighty heard his cry and gave him 15 more years to live. So I don't care what the doctors say. He might tell you this, that the sickness is terminal. Why don't you turn your face to the Lord and do what Hezekiah did and pray. But then I looked at another book and Jonah was disobedient to the will of God. And the Bible tells me that God prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah whole. Oh, the Bible did not say it was a whale, but instead a big fish. But it says that God prepared a great big fish. And I don't know about you, church, that anything that the Lord prepares is perfect and complete. So I'm here to tell you, the Lord prepared the fish. But Jonah went into prayer until the fish spit him up on dry land. I'm here to tell you, you can even turn your wrongs right if you just go to the Lord. Jonah was very disobedient. For he know he found himself in the belly of the fish. But he prayed to God and he got uh, spit up on dry land. So I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you about my God. That prayer came. Prayer came also by Jesus. Jesus was hanging there on the cross and I'm here to tell you prayer came to Jesus can't you see him hanging there on the cross yes yes and they had done him wrong probably like they done you wrong he was hanging there people making all kinds of fun of Jesus people calling him all kinds of names people not believing that he was the son of the most high God but even in this condition Yes. Jesus went to God in prayer. Yes. He was concerned yes. that his father yes. might get angry and strike down the fire from heaven. Yes. He was concerned yes. that his father might prepare some kind of animal to eat up all of humankind. Yes. He was concerned yes. that God had already sent his humankind to die. Oh Lord, but Jesus went into prayer and he said, Father, yes. Father, yes. Father, yes. forgive him. Yes. He said, forgive him. Forgive them for lying on me. Forgive them for beating me. Forgive them for spitting on me. Forgive them for robbing me. Forgive them for everything they've done that is against your will. But the Bible tells me that after he prayed, he hung down his head and gave up the ghost. And I don't know about you, but on that fire. When Jesus died, that could have been the end of the world. That could have been the end of you and I and all of humankind. But God heard the prayer of Jesus. And early, I said early, we're working towards early. We got two more weeks and then we'll get to early. Early that Sunday morning. Early that Sunday morning. He got up with all power in his hand. And because he got up with all power, even in your bad condition, even in your so-called no-win scenario, even in your battle against the enemy, because he got up and because you're fasting in prayer, you can find joy in the midst of your sorrow. You can find courage in the midst of your comfort. You can find peace in the midst of your persecution. You can find hope in the midst of your heart. And you can find calmness in the midst of your challenge and you can find your life in the midst of your there's power when you go to prayer but all you got to do if I can simplify look at Jehoshaphat look at him in verse 12 all he did was say Lord I can't figure this thing out it's a little bit too much for me but I got my eyes fixed on you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I done got the diagnosis, and they think they gave me a prognosis. But I've got my eyes fixed on you. Oh, Lord. If he called me from the jailhouse one more time, he don't realize I ain't know what to do the other four times. I don't know what to do. But I've got my eyes fixed on you. Lord, I'm trying to kick this happy. But every time I walk up the block, I used to pay for it, and now that I'm free, they want to give it to me for free. I don't know what to do. I'm trying to figure it out. I took it this way. I can walk that way. But there's free men. There's free product on every end. Lord, I don't know what to do. 
but I'm fixing my eyes on you. I'm here to tell you, stay fixed on God. And I promise you, his word to you will be, listen, I'm glad you considered me. Now that you've given it to me, go on and sit down and rest your nerve. Set your eyes on my salvation and watch me. Work this thing out. For God is the Lord.